So I want to continue on the three-week series on Holy Spirit. And we started the first week with Holy Spirit, help me. That we should realize how much we need the help of the Holy Spirit. We know we need God in our lives, but we don't always realize how much we need God in our lives. Amen? Then we looked at Holy Spirit, empower me. Just to realize that God has empowered us for Christian service. Whatever you are doing, do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. And today, we're going to look at Holy Spirit, take more of me. Have you ever prayed a prayer, Holy Spirit, take more of me, give me more of you? Holy Spirit, uproot everything that's not of you and plant everything that's of you. Holy Spirit, help me that everything about me is everything about you. Have you ever prayed a prayer like that? Maybe you've prayed, Holy Spirit, let your fire burn through me and consume everything that's not of you. I remember as a young Christian, I prayed that in humility and said, let your fire burn through me and consume everything that's not of you, Lord. I remember by the end of that week, I was rebuking the devil. And God said to me, no, you don't have to rebuke the devil. I'm just removing some stuff there that I'm not happy with. Amen. Ever experienced that? You need a revelation from God to understand the importance of having more of God in your life than of yourself. John in John 3 verse 30, he said, he must increase, but I must decrease. He must increase but I must decrease. Of what value is the Holy Spirit in your life? Who is increasing in your life? Are you allowing God to increase in your life? Or are you increasing in your life? Is it God's will? Or is it your will? Is it God's way? Or is it your way? We have to ask ourselves those questions. And the Holy Spirit must help us and bring that revelation to us to understand how much we need Him. Oftentimes, even as Christians, we we make this huge error. We want to instruct God what He should do, how He should do it, when He should do it, and how quickly and fast He should do it. Am I talking to the right people here this morning? The prophet Isaiah said this about God is that My thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Sometimes when we look at a situation from a natural point of view, it's very easy to make a mistake. Apostle Paul, that wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, before he became Apostle Paul, He was known as Saul, a man that persecuted and killed Christians. But when he had an encounter with God, his life changed. When God took more of him and gave Saul more of himself, Saul the persecutor became Paul the apostle who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. I want you to turn in your Bibles with me to the book of Acts chapter 9. God does not call the equipped, but God equips the called. Sometimes we want to equip ourselves. We think we have qualified. God is the one who calls us. When you are called, God will equip you. Amen? Are you there? Acts chapter 9. You know the story where Saul is on his way to Damascus He's going to kill all the bad Christians. And he has an encounter with God. Acts 9, verse 4. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Family, I want to start by saying whatever you are going through, if people are persecuting you, it's never personal. It's never personal. When Christ is on the inside of you, Paul had this revelation, Christ on the inside of us, the hope of glory. When people are coming against you, 
They're not persecuting you. They are persecuting Christ. That's why Jesus taught us and said, when they curse you, bless them. Because they're not cursing you. They are cursing the Christ on the inside of you. If they are despitefully using you, pray for them. Because they're not despitefully using you. They're despitefully using the Christ on the inside of you. The Lord said to Saul, why are you persecuting me? He had never persecuted Christ. From his frame of mind, he was killing Christians that was busy with a bad assignment. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Family, we can see from this, Saul was a Pharisee. He knew the word. He said, who are you, Lord? Sometimes you can know the word of God without knowing the God who gave the word. Many people know Scripture, but they don't know God. They can quote Scriptures, but they're not a friend of Jesus. You can know Scripture, but not know the God of the Scripture. When Saul had this kind of experience, his life changed completely. He said, then the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, it is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? When you've encountered God, you'll say, God, what do you want me to do? The Lord said to him, arise and go. We've been talking about this. When last did you have a go moment where God spoke to you and said, go? This encounter that Saul had is exactly what Moses experienced. We talked about it last week. This was Saul's burning bush moment. When God spoke to him and said, arise, go, he acted immediately and he went. Every time you have an experience with God, he will empower you. Paul, or Saul at this stage, he needed somebody to help him. We have to be ready to help those that are seeking God. Oftentimes people can have an experience with God but we still have to show them the more excellent way. Go to verse 13. You know how God spoke to Ananias and he said, I want you to go and meet up with Saul. You have to pray for him. You have to share things with him. Many times when we get an assignment from God, there's a lot of things from a natural point of view that does not make sense. Amen? Amen. Look at verse 13. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard. It's not what we have heard. It's not what we have seen, but what is God saying about the situation? Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. Lord, this is dangerous. This doesn't make sense. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, go. Every time you have an encounter with God, there'll be a go to take action because faith without works is dead. Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. Family, it's very important in this time not to look at a person from a natural point of view and say, I've heard this about this person. More important, what is heaven saying about the person? What is heaven saying about your situation? As Christians, let us be known that we are for God, not that we are always against evil. There's a big difference because it's all about your focus. We can focus so much where we come from. Don't focus so much what you've been saved from. Focus what you've been saved into. We've all made mistakes. Sometimes we ponder so much on the mistakes that we've made that we cannot move in what God has got for us. Paul said in Galatians 2 verse 20, he wrote, after he had this revelation, he said, I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Sometimes we crucify ourselves so much 
for all the mistakes that we have made. Am I talking to the right people here this morning? We crucify ourselves so much. The key is not to suppress the flesh. The key is to walk in the Spirit. The key is not to crucify the flesh. The key is to be led by the Holy Spirit. That's the work upon the cross where Jesus died once and for all, a work we could not do. But when we accept his life, remember you confess that Jesus died and you confess that he's been made alive. It's that resurrection power that gives us hope. It's not focusing on the size of the mountain, but the absolute faith that we have in Almighty God. How will you know that God can remove a mountain in your life if you've never faced a mountain? How would you know God is a giant slayer if you've never faced a giant? I want to tell you, expect a miracle. You have a helper here to help you. Amen? You have a helper. God is in the miracle business. All of us have been going through COVID. I mean, it's been a challenging season. Maybe you've been in lockdown. You've been in isolation. You're wondering if things are ever going to change. Maybe you've had a soul persecuting you. I want to encourage you this morning. Have an expectation that that soul that's been persecuting you is going to have an encounter with God and everything is going to change. Amen? I want to look at the life of Gideon. And you know, the, the thing about Gideon is God called him a hero before the battle. God called Gideon a hero. He called him a mighty man of valor, a mighty woman of valor before the battle. Whatever you are facing, whatever lies ahead, get heaven's opinion about yourself. The first battle, the greatest battle, is not the one out in the battlefield. The greatest battle is the one on the inside. That's the first battle that you're going to have to face. Amen? Let's go look at Gideon. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was at Oprah, which belonged to Joash the Abiezrite, while his son Gideon threshed weed in the wine press in order to hide from the Midianites. This is so wonderful. He was hiding. He had fear. You know what's so amazing about this scripture? God will always meet you where you're at. If you're afraid, if you're hiding, God didn't say, oh, mighty man, come thus out of where you are hiding and meet me on the high hill. I want to talk to you. No. God will always meet you where you're at. If you're feeling vulnerable, if you're hiding, if you're scared, God will meet you there. And he'll talk to you there. Amen. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, the Lord is with you you mighty man of valor. Wow. Before the battle, God is declaring this over him. God is declaring this over you and me. Gideon said to him, Oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? Have you ever had a Gideon moment where you said, God, I'm a Christian. I'm, I'm your child. Why is this happening to me? Don't raise your hand. But I know I'm talking to the right people here. Amen. Have you had a moment like that? God, why? Gideon takes it to the next step. He says, and why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles? He says, if you say that you are with us, where's all the miracles? The things that you have promised, Lord, if you say that you're with us, where are they? Wow, things not changing. Turn to the person next to you say, that's a good question. Turn to the person on the other side and say, that's a good question. Which our fathers told us about, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt, but now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites, verse 14. Then the Lord turned to him and said, go in this might of yours. Don't look at what you are seeing. Go, instruction in righteousness. Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Verse 15. So he said to him, O oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, 
and I am the least in my Father's house. Admitting your weakness makes room for God's strength. Admitting your weakness makes room for God's strength. When you go, when you say, God, I don't think I can do it. Help me. We have a friend in the Holy Spirit that will help us. When heaven declares heaven's report over you, it's the time to say, Lord, take more of me and give me more of you. What we need right now is not to see the Midianites around us, the danger around us, but we need to hear what God is saying about the situation. He was hiding in fear, and the Lord said, mighty man of valor, you're going to be a hero. I want to tell you one thing. If you're going to put the Lord to the test when it comes to his promises, he will put you to the test. If you want to test God, put his word to the test. Get ready for the word of God to test you. Amen? What did he say? Go. Go. Everything changed when Gideon arose as a mighty man of valor. Sometimes you just have to get up and say, I'm going to start taking that first step. Look at here what happened. Verse 16. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Then he said to him, If now I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you who talk with me. It's not about our ability, but it's about his mercy. More of him, less of us. I like Gideon. He said, give me a sign. How many of you are waiting for a sign? Said, God, just give me a sign. I really want to do and fulfill this promise that you have given me, but Lord, give me a sign. I want to go. I want to step out, Lord, but give me the sign. Let me see your hand. Wonderful. I'm talking to the right people here. Well, I want to tell you your sign has come. Your sign has come. In the book of Isaiah, the prophet comes to the king, King Ayaz, and he says to the king, he says, you can ask a sign of me. He says, ask anything you want. He says, it can be high, it can be low, it can be difficult, whatever you want to ask. King Ayaz has got this false humility about him. He says, no, I'm not going to ask the Lord for a sign. I'm not going to test the Lord. God spoke to him and said, you can ask a sign. I said, I don't want to put God to the test. Sometimes we, we've got so stupid ways before God. When God wants to help us, we want to get all spiritual, but it's, we're not being spiritual. The prophet says to him, okay, it's enough that you're weary man, but now you want to weary God as well? He says, this is what the Lord says. This is the sign that I'm going to give you. You didn't want to ask for a sign, I'll give you a sign. Not an easy sign, but I'll give you a sign. What will happen is, a virgin will one day give birth and the name of the one that she'll give birth to, his name will be Emmanuel. What does that mean? Emmanuel means God is with us. It says, you've asked for a sign, I'm going to give you a sign. The sign will be Emmanuel, God is with us. What did Gideon say? Gideon said, if the Lord is with us, Where's the miracles? Where's the breakthrough? Where's the deliverance? Family, I want to assure you that God is with us. If this is the sign that God has given us, can I ask you a question? What is your excuse? Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, I'm going to do it. He said to the king, you can ask a sign. You're not testing God. God is going to put you to the test to see if you really believe him. He has given us the sign. You know what's the amazing thing? When you go and look at Mark 16, the disciples that was with Jesus, they spent time with Jesus. When Jesus said to them, go into the world, Mark 16 verse 15, he said, go into the world, preach the gospel, make disciples. Then as you read on, he said, and these signs these miracles will follow those. They will cast out demons. They will start to speak in tongues. 
They will lay hands on the sick, will recover. There will be breakthrough, there will be healings, there will be deliverance. I mean, the sick will get healed if they step on something that's dangerous. He said, I'm just going to be with them and I'm going to protect them. I'm going to be their shield, I'm going to be their protection, I'm going to be their exceedingly great reward. Because I'm with you. What did Matthew write? Matthew wrote exactly the same. He said, go into the world, make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them all these things. Did he list the miracles? No, he said, I'm just going to summarize it for you. I am with you always. I am with you always. Family, do you believe that Jesus came to this earth? Do you believe that he was born of a virgin? Do you believe that he died for you, that he rose from the dead? Emmanuel, God is with us. That's the sign to all of us. Can you see the need to pray every day? Lord, take more of me. Give me more of you. The key, if you want more of the Holy Spirit in your life, is obedience. Paul, to receive the Holy Spirit, he had to be obedient when the Lord gave him instruction in righteousness. Ananias had to be obedient. Gideon had to be obedient. If you go and you read on, you'll see the Lord asked of him to destroy everything that was linked to Baal. What is in your life that is not pleasing to God that you have to destroy, that you have to remove? It's Acts 5 verse 32 teaches us the Holy Spirit is given to those who obey him. And Ananias, after Saul was obedient and he had laid hands on him, he received his sight, and the Bible says he was filled with the Holy Spirit. When we want more of God in our lives, it's required of us to be obedient. The Lord comes to Gideon and he says, you've put me to the test. He said, if I'm with you, where's the miracles? He said, there's 32,000 of you. If you have the victory now, you won't give glory to me. You'll take the glory and say, we've defeated the Midianites. He says, tell everybody who's got fear in their hearts, go home. The Bible says 22,000 people went home. The Lord said, there's 10,000 here. There's still too many. You've put me to the test. You've asked if I'm with you. Where's the miracle? Let them kneel and drink water. And you know the story, how 300 men were left. He says, now there's enough where well, you cannot say you've done it in your own strength. It's not by your might. It's not by your power. But it will be my, by my spirit that I'll give you this victory. Go in the power and the might, Gideon. You mighty man of valor, go. And he didn't go in his own strength, but he had to rely on the help of the Holy Spirit. I assure you, that was a place where you prayed, take more of me, Lord. Give me more of you. What we are looking for right now, those 300 men, without fear, putting their trust in God, saying, God, you have to fight for us, otherwise we'll never have the victory. We're looking for those to draw together and to say, we'll take the responsibility in this nation, in this community, in this province, to say, Lord, here we are. Use us as instruments of righteousness. Let our prayer be, give us 300 families. 300 men, no fear in their heart, saying God is with us. Let's go out, have a go moment and say, I can pray for you. I will help you. I'm here to lead you and show you a more excellent way. Family, let me tell you something. This is all about the heart. Gideon had given God the rightful place in his heart. And Ananias could hear the report of everything around him, that this Saul is busy killing people, harming the kingdom of God. But because he had given God the rightful place in his heart, he could obey the instruction in righteousness and go on that dangerous assignment and pray for Saul. And Saul, the persecutor, became Apostle Paul, who did many signs, wonders, and miracles and wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. You have received the sign, Emmanuel, God is with you. When you know God is with you, step out with this confidence and expect that miracle. 
when it looks impossible around you, don't be led by what you hear, but get heaven's report. It's that obedience that you have towards the word of God. The Holy Spirit are given to those who obey him. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, to take us from glory to glory, from strength to strength. Are you ready to pray that prayer and say, Lord, take more of me, give me more of you. Like a John that said, he must increase so that I can decrease. If we want to take this nation, people need more of God, not more of us. His will be done not our will. Let everything about me become everything about him. Sela. Precious Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy, your tremendous grace. Thank you, Lord, for these examples in the word of God. Lord, that you see us as mighty men and women of valor, heroes before the battle, O Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are the one who is, that will go before us, O Lord, to make our way straight and smooth. The one helping us, O Lord, every day. And we thank you for that. Be our shield and be our protection and be our exceedingly great reward, O Lord. And we thank you for that. We bless you for that. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. I want you right there where you are just to put your right hand on your heart. Raise your other hand to heaven and pray this prayer aloud after me. Say, Precious Father, Say it again, say, Precious Father, my situation is beyond human means. I need the Savior of the world to save me. Save me, Lord Jesus. Wash me with your blood and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I confess with my mouth and I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, that he's alive right now, making intercession for all my weaknesses. Oh, Holy Spirit, help me to live a holy life well-pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. Well, if you've prayed that prayer in humility and sincerity of heart, your sins have been forgiven. Your past is over. Don't mention your past anymore. Our past is Egypt. It's a place of bondage, a place of failure. But God has disconnected you from that and is leading us into the promised land. I want to encourage you. Find a living church. Get involved in that living church and serve there like never before. Are you from the area around here? We want to take responsibility for you. I actually have to take responsibility for you. As a person that's been born in this house, I want to walk with you so that you can grow in the things of the Lord. So you can mature in Christ Jesus to finish this race strong. Amen. God bless you. Has your faith been lifted? Are you ready to go out and to just manifest God's presence knowing that God is with you? Expect a miracle. Expect that Saul that's been persecuting you to have an encounter with God and everything just to change around. Amen. Amen.